What is going on everybody? What is going on the catch fan? My name is John Dawson and in today's video we are hopping into another 2022 fantasy football mock draft. In today's video we will be drafting from the seventh overall selection in an eight team format through the ESPN platform in a full PPR scoring format. Got a request for this specific mock draft so you guys know how it works. If you guys have any mock draft requests, whether it's a pre-recorded video like this one or a live subscriber mock draft through Sleeper, please let me know in the comments down below. On top of that, if you do enjoy today's content, be sure to hit that like button on the way in and hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Come join the catch. Family, without further ado, let's hop into another mock draft. All right, so sitting at 1.7 overall, I'm really just going to evaluate what running backs and receivers are available at that point in the draft and really just go with the best overall value. That's the thing in an eight-team format is you're going to be going up against absolutely stacked teams on a weekly basis. So gaining positional value at running back and receiver is very very important gaining positional value in general at quarterback and tight end is also going to be important so we'll see who's available we've got jt off the board at 1.1 christian mccaffrey gone at 1.2 cooper cup gone at 1.3 and austin eckler gone at 1.4 there goes derrick henry at 1.5 so generally speaking i do tend to like to go running back early but as justin jefferson selected at 1.6 really when we look at the receivers available there's just better overall positional value at receiver i'm going to go with jamar chase at 1.6 and having an early selection in the second round will still give us some advantage at the running back position there's a high chance that Najee harris dalvin cook or joe mixon are going to be available at 2.2 so there goes Najee harris to finish out the first round and we'll move into the second round we're just going to target the best available Running back, I wouldn't mind Dalvin Cook here, but if he does get selected, and he does, he's off the board. So there are a lot of good receivers sitting here, but we'll go with Joe Mixon. We've got a double Bengals team to start this draft, but I really don't have an issue with that, guys. There are a couple of offenses that I don't mind having multiple pieces from whatsoever, and the Bengals are on that list moving into the 2022 season. So after that selection of Mixon, we saw Stefan Diggs off the board, Devontae Adams, Debo Samuel, and CeeDee Lamb. Just a wild, wild run at the receiver position. Like I said, a lot of good receivers sitting on the board at 2.2 overall, but that is okay. We start this draft off with Mixon and Chase. I'm happy with that. DeAndre Swift is gone. We've got one more selection here in the second round before we move into the third. So if you do draft through ESPN, they do have Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey ranked relatively low, so you should be able to potentially target them in the third round, at least in the 18 league. But I would make kind of an asterisk if you're landing them in mock drafts on a consistent basis at a really good value. Just keep in mind that come draft day, they're probably not going to last past the second round, even in a 18 league. They are just going in subscriber mock draft after subscriber mock draft you know we've got kelsey going at the end of the first at least by the beginning of the second then we've got mark andrews going by the mid second and those are in 12 team leagues so i i would just make an asterisk but for the sake of today's mock draft we're definitely going to be targeting travis kelsey or mark andrews and try and gain that big positional advantage at the tight end position so we've got alvin kamara gone leonard Fournette gone javante williams and james connor gone here to start the third round let's take a look at who's available i'd like to go running back here if aaron jones somehow falls out then i'll go jones at 23 if he does not then we'll be going with saquon barkley there goes aaron jones so he's gone so i'd like to land barkley at 23 and then travis kelsey at 26 kind of gain a little bit of a higher ceiling at the running back position as cam Akers is selected so let's go with barkley and then gain that true positional advantage at the tight end position with kelsey at 26 so there goes mark andrews so uh, you know there's a big debate is mark andrews your tight end one or travis kelsey eileen kelsey by just a hair but regardless i do really like either tight end as their tight end one all day long so let's go kelsey here and we'll move into the fourth round so i like to go a little bit heavier at running back earlier in 18 drafts just because there's going to be so much depth at receiver in general whether you're drafting an 18 league or a 14 team league you're going to see the most depth at 
receiver. Don't get me wrong, you still want to try and gain some positional value early at receiver, but there's going to be plenty of selections throughout the draft. I mean, we might be able to land Mike Williams at pick 42 or 39. I mean, just think about this ceiling with Jamar Chase and Mike Williams on the same team. And then even into the seventh round, you can still get guys like Darnold Mooney, DK Metcalf, Gabe Davis, Hunter Renfro, Allen Robinson. So there's going to be plenty of depth at the receiver position. So coming up at pick 39, we'll probably go ahead and get another receiver, but we'll, we'll take a look at what running backs are available at that point as well so here in the fourth round we got nick chubb travis kelsey aj brown keenan allen t higgins dj moore and mike evans all off the board one more selection here in the fourth round and then we'll move into the fifth so i like to start with this team we got mixon barkley chase and kelsey feel good about the running back room a nice high consistent ceiling and jamar chase at receiver and then kelsey's just going to always give you that consistent value at the tight end position and give us an advantage over our opponents i really do emphasize in an 18 league go out and target a tight end early whether it's kelsey or andrews getting one of those guys on your squad is getting you a week to week advantage over your opponent all right so david montgomery wraps up the fourth round and into the fifth round we are we've got michael Pittman gone as the first selection in the fifth round there goes jalen waddle there goes jk dobbins there goes Brees hall I will say if Zeke falls out at pick 39, I don't have a problem going with Zeke. No quarterbacks taken so far. We've still got Josh Allen floating around. So, you know, I've been talking about positional advantage basically throughout this whole video, right? And I do, you know, there's a point where I'm not going to pass up Josh Allen, right? But he's ranked at 42 overall. We're at pick 39. And listen. I mean, I really like Herbert. I still like Mahomes, Jackson Murray. I really like Hertz and Burrow. And that's the thing. There's going to be a lot of value at quarterback throughout the draft. So let's go ahead and let's snag up Mike Williams. Let's get a receiver here. We're due to pick a receiver. Then let's take a look at running back. I think we can hold off for a round or so and maybe still land a Travis Etienne. And then, then later on, go after guys like A.J. Dillon. Or Rashad Penny, James Cook. There's some good late round value there. If I did go running back here, it would definitely be Josh Jacobs, Gibson, or Mitchell. But let's take a look at receiver. I just think there's going to be a lot more value at receiver throughout the draft. So let's just go ahead and let's snag up a running back. Let's go Elijah Mitchell. Why not? And let's move in to the sixth round. So we did see our first quarterback off the board at 41 overall and Josh Allen to start the sixth round. Elijah Mitchell gone to our team at pick 42. At pick 43, we've got Antonio Gibson off of the board. So to start the team, we got Mixon, Barkley, and Eli Mitchell at running back to Mark Chase and Mike Williams. So we've got a really high ceiling between two receivers and then Travis Kelsey at the tight end position. So moving into the seventh round, we're going to keep an eye on the quarterback position. We want to see, I mean, if Justin Herbert is still available around 55, 58, I'm probably not going to pass up Justin Herbert, but Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, uh, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Rodgers, Stafford, Lance, Carr. We'll just make a little bit of a cue and keep an eye at the quarterback position. In terms of running backs available, I still like ETN. Love A.J. Dillon. And A.J. Dillon, you know, it's a good note to make if you do draft through ESPN. He is ranked a little bit lower overall in our subscriber mock drafts. I mean, granted, we do draft primarily in 12-team formats. A.J. Dillon is still gone by the end of the fourth round all day long. I mean, he is a player that fantasy managers are going after so and i mean another guy available right now travis etn is going pretty early in mock drafts so you know take it for what it is take it with a grain of salt in some of these mock drafts that you see through different platforms online with auto picks although we mainly got a full house here but nonetheless there are one or two running backs going a little bit later in these mocks that may not be available come draft day as late so we'll go ahead and queue up james robinson rashad penny james cook and Damian Pierce, I mean, those are really my late round guys. I like Tyler Algier as well, who's ranked pretty low here, and Daryl Henderson as well. So uh, we'll keep an eye on all those backs, and Tony Pollard needs to be in that mix as well, my bad. But nonetheless, we got so much depth at receiver, so much depth. So we'll keep an eye here. If Herbert's available at 55, I'm probably just going to go ahead and snag him. But that's the thing, man. In an 18-league, you can really hold off, especially through ESPN's rankings and still get a guy like Jalen Hurts 
or Joe Burrow, who I think hold a ton of value. The thing with Herbert for me, though, is I truly believe Herbert could finish as the quarterback one on the season. So there's just a point for me. And there he goes at 51. You know, there's really just a point where if Herbert's available, I'm not going to pass him up. He's really the only quarterback that I feel that way about. So Herbert does go at 51 overall, a good value there. And now we just kind of sit back and wait to kind of snag a Jalen Hurts or a Joe Burrow. But we'll see if Jackson or Kyler Murray fall at the right point. Since we are not going to land Justin Herbert here at 55, DK Metcalf becomes my number one receiver on the board. And the player I would like to target here at 55 overall. If he gets selected, we'll go with maybe a breakout guy in a Jerry Judy. I think Mooney would bring some nice consistency to this roster as we already have a high ceiling involved with Chase and Williams. There goes Mooney off the board. Chris Godwin is another really interesting selection here as well. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on these top rated players. There goes Travis Etienne. So we do land DK Metcalf. We'll go ahead and we'll take him off the board. I think he's just going to have a season peppered with targets regardless of who ends up being the quarterback one. So I like him there. And then Jerry Judy goes and in to the eighth round we are. Man, if Chris Godwin was still sitting there, it's going to be really hard for me to pass up on Chris Godwin. So let's take a look at running back as ETN is gone. I think we're in a good spot at the running back position where we can still get a lot of good late round value so let's double up on receiver cooper sitting here gabe davis sitting here i like both of those guys but let's go with Allen robinson who could have a breakout season with the rams been a while since we've seen Allen robinson be very very productive on a consistent basis it's been a year or so but i think he's got in a very good position with the rams so we'll take Allen robinson there jalen hurts off the board so Hertz is no longer an available quarterback for us, but that's okay. We still got a pool of Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, and Joe Burrow. I want one of those guys on this roster. So whether it's pick 71 or 74, I'm going to be going after one of those players. Let's take a double look. Team Pope does have Josh Allen. So I think we can reserve our quarterback selection for pick 74. I doubt he's going quarterback at 72 or 73 so we'll go with the best available running back or receiver at pick 71 i think we're going to be able to land some really good running back value in this draft later on and we've got a pretty decent running back room with barkley mixon and mitchell so i really like that late round tier of running backs man i mean aj Dillon's a guy i want on this roster so after pick 74 i'm probably going to go ahead and target him because i don't want to miss out on him there's also an argument to be made to select them at pick 74 but we'll see who's available here man hunter renfro and devonta smith are probably my top available receivers man it's gonna make for an interesting receiver room. jamar chase mike williams dk metcalf Allen robinson then we add one of those guys is a really really solid start the other idea here is there are a lot of good quarterbacks available you could go for a second quarterback in an A-team league, like, I don't know if you necessarily need to, but at the same time, to have that positional value throughout the entire season and then sure you've got two guys. I mean, the only issue there is, you know, you on a weekly basis, you just might be fighting, am I going to start Kyler Murray or am I going to be starting Joe Burrow? So let's go ahead and let's lock up Hunter Renfro here. Let's get an additional receiver. That might do it for the receiver room, depending on who's available later on. So Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, Metcalf, Allen Robinson, and Hunter Renfro. You know, I love that start to the receiver room all day long. So at pick 74, I don't know, man. There are a lot of good quarterbacks hanging around. So I think I'm going to go Kyler Murray at 74, as long as he's available, which he is. And let's see if Burrow falls out to 87. Let's think about going double quarterback. Why not? I mean, we've got a solid receiving room. I think there's going to be some sleepers at the running back position that we can snag up. We already have three running backs. We're sitting at uh, five receivers. We got Kelsey at tight end. Why not go for a double quarterback? We'll see. If Burrow's available, I'll definitely do it. If he's not, then I'll reconsider. So, and I mean, at the end of the day, I don't mind Kyler Murray as a QB1. All right, so moving into round 10. Uh, so Drake London, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, Rodell Patterson, Singletary, Devonta Smith, and Kareem Hunt off the board. So I'm going to go ahead and remove a couple QBs off of my queue here. We'll keep an eye on Lance and Carr as late round options. But AJ Dillon, Rashad Penny, James Robinson, James Cook, Damon Pierce really become my top targets here. 
I mean, I think we're sitting in a pretty good spot at receiver. And if we need to, we can go for a later round guy. I mean, Elijah Moore sitting here is really good value. Chris Olave I like as well. Brandon Ayuk, Garrett Wilson, Christian Kirk. You got some pretty good options here. But Tyler Boyd is really just that late round guy that I'll take all day long. Especially since we've got Jamar Chase on this team. And God forbid anything happens to Jamar Chase, he's going to gain some value. God forbid anything happens to T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd gains automatic value. I mean, he's really like the best quote unquote handcuff receiver you can draft. But outside of that, as a slot receiver in full PPR, I think he just holds a ton of value in later rounds. Just part of such a good offense. I don't mind having, you know, if we ended up with Burrow, Mixon, Chase, and Tyler Boyd on this roster, I really don't have a problem with it. I think the Bengals are going to have an incredible season offensively. The Bengals, the Chargers, the Cardinals, the Raiders, the Buccaneers. Like, there are multiple offenses that I just don't mind having multiple pieces from moving into the 2022 season. So coming up on pick 87, I'm going to try and go for Burrow here. I mean, we got Prescott. I mean, there goes uh, Stafford. So we got Prescott, Brady, and Rodgers all available. Yeah, Tony Pollard off the board. So I don't usually do this, but let's double up at QB. And one of the reasons why, while I don't mind Kyler Murray as a QB1, he does tend to have kind of like that a uh, mid-season slump that's usually due to injury, maybe a later part of the season due to injury slump. So having Burrow and Murray on this team, I mean, on a week-to-week -week basis, we're never going to worry about quarterback. And, you know, worst case scenario, I mean, really a best case scenario, I should say, down the road is we have trade value at the quarterback position if we need to move that route. Okay, so let's take a look here, man. Elijah Moore sitting here. Oh, I want to pull the trigger. It would really make for a filthy receiver room, but we're in a good place at receiver. I'm not going to pass up AJ Dillon. I want him on this roster. There's a chance he falls out to 103, but I'm going to go ahead and lock up uh, AJ Dillon. I'm good at that. So the other thing we could consider here is throwing in another tight end. Dawson Knox or Hunter Henry would be the two guys I would consider. I mean, I like Zach Ertz. Excuse me. I like Mike Gusecki. I like Fearmuth, Cole Komet, and Noah Fant also holds some value in my opinion, but uh I mean, it's just behind Kelsey. I just don't know if you need to, right? You know, if you wanted to add a tight end throughout the season, if someone pops up on the waiver wire performing well on a consistent basis, and I think that's fine. But if you draft Kelsey, I just don't know if you need to draft a second tight end. But similar to what we did with quarterback, you could gain some value there. But I think the more important thing with this team with Barkley and Mitchell being a little bit volatile in terms of injury is to go out and just snag up two running backs. If we did not do so, we go one running back, one tight end, or instead of a tight end, maybe go with a guy like Tyler Boyd at receiver. So I think regardless, we're going to end up with a team that I really like here. Moving into the 13th round at pick 103, Rashad Penny is my top target. I think if he's fully healthy, he's the guy in Seattle. We all saw what he did at the end of last season when he was healthy. So I'll be targeting Rashad Penny here. James Cook just went off the board. He's another late round running back that I really like just taking a chance on. I think he could have a great rookie season talking about rookie running backs i also love damian pierce i mean all signs out of training camp point to damian pierce being the starting rb1 for the texans i get it it's the texans not an incredibly attractive offense on paper but a starting running back is a starting running back especially in the red zone and i've liked damian pierce all off season long he's been a rookie i've talked about a lot who is going to have a clear shot to become an rb1 for the texans and so far through training camp all signs are pointing in that direction. So I love him as a late round selection. He's ranked overall at 209 through ESPN. He's a little bit higher on some other platforms. And I think as we continue to approach the regular season, he's going to continue to move up in ADP. So let's take Derek Carr off of our board here. We're not going to be drafting another quarterback. Into the 13th round, we got Trey Lance, Aaron Rodgers, Elijah Moore, and Traylon Burks off the board. I mean, all good value here in the 13th round let's take a look at receiver there's not anyone really popping off the board here i like chris alave a lot and i like tyler boyd but looking at our room once again i mean jamar chase mike williams metcalf robinson and renfro five solid receivers we could still consider a six receiver if we do it's going to be tyler boyd looking at tight end dawson knox is really intriguing but let's go ahead let's pick our running back in rashad penny so running back room we got mixon Barkley, Mitchell, A.J. Dillon, Rashad Penny. So really here, like, there's three different directions that I would consider going. Damian Pierce at running back, Chris Alave or Tyler Boyd at receiver, 
or Dawson Knox as a tight end two, even Zach Ertz still hanging around as a tight end two or Hunter Henry. And I don't even mind Mike Gusecki or, or Fearmuth. But I think if you have Kelsey outside of his bye week in week eight, you're probably perfectly fine. I think Knox brings a nice ceiling when fully healthy, being a part of that Bills offense and being such a big target for Josh Allen and company. Uh, Chris Olave, I like. Tyler Boyd, I like. But at the end of the day, let's add another running back. Let's add Damian Pierce just because we are a little bit, I mean, we just got some volatility at running back. So that really fills out the majority of our roster, our set of kicker and defense. So we'll pick the best available kicker and the best available defense, and we'll have another mock draft in the books. So looking at this team overall, we got Kyler Murray as our QB1. Joe Burrow is our QB2. I mean, I usually don't do that in a team format, but things just kind of fell that way throughout this draft. And I think, like I said, the best case scenario is we have trade value down the road. We have two quarterbacks to choose from on a weekly basis, which can be you know, a little bit of a headache. But at the end of the day, we're in a good spot at quarterback. We're not going to have to worry about it throughout the whole season. Tight end position, we have a huge advantage, huge positional advantage, something I really encourage in 18 drafts to go after a tight end early, get a premium top two tight end, whether it's Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews. So Kelsey at the tight end position, and we're very happy with that. Nixon, Barkley, Eli Mitchell, A.J. Dillon, Rashad Penny, and Damian Pierce at running back. We really targeted some late round running back value in this draft. I think it paid off. I really do. And at the receiver position, we got Jamar Chase, Mike Williams, Metcalf, Robinson, and Renfro. So I think another really good receiving room. Just think about starting Chase and Williams on a weekly basis. You've got a massive ceiling involved with those two receivers. I think Metcalf and Renfro will offer some consistency in PPR scoring formats. And then Allen Robinson, just a really nice fifth receiver to have in that mix, who could have a breakout season being a part of the Rams. So I think this is a really good team overall. We'll pick the best available kicker, and best available defense, like I said, we'll call this thing a day. All right, so taking a look here at kicker, I like Daniel Carlson, Nick Folk, or Tyler Bass. Let's take a look at defense. I mean, the Niners, Cowboys, or Colts, Patriots, Rams. I mean, we got all kinds of options. You're going to have a little bit more flexibility in an eight-team league. So Daniel Carlson was your kicker number one last season. I think that offense improved in the offseason. So let's go with Daniel Carlson. Looking at defense, the Cowboys have a really easy strength of schedule. Number one defense in fantasy last season. I like the Colts defense a lot, although it's you know, been reported Darius Leonard's probably going to miss some time, which I think hurts. Rams defense sitting around. Weren't great from a fantasy perspective last season, but they do add Bobby Wagner. There's a lot of issues here. The Browns have a very good strength of schedule the first four weeks of the season. Steelers are always interesting with Watt coming off the edge. The Eagles have a good strength of schedule. Bengals have a good strength of schedule, at least to start the season. So do the Broncos. So we got all kinds of options here. A lot of chit chat, but let's go with the Cowboys. Why not? And uh, we'll call this thing a day. Another mock draft in the book. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, I do kindly ask that you guys hit that like button down below and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. If you guys have any mock draft requests, please feel free to drop a comment down below with what mock draft you guys would like to see, whether it's an eight team format from a specific pick, whether it's a 10 team, a 12 team, a 14 team, half PPR standard, whatever it is, let me know in the comments down below and whether you'd like to see it as a pre-recorded video like this one or a live subscriber mock draft through Sleeper, please let me know down below. If you guys would like to join one of our future subscriber mock drafts, be sure to join our Discord. Link is in the description down below. It's completely free to join. That is the only way to get our mock draft invites and just the best way to get community updates for the channel overall. All right, one last look at the team here. We got Jamar Chase, Mixon, Barkley, Kelsey, Mike Williams, Elijah Mitchell, Metcalf, Allen Robinson, Hunter Renfro, Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, AJ Dillon, Rashad Penny, Damon Pierce, Danny Carlson, and the Cowboys defense. Just an overall filthy squad. Very, very good from head to toe. I'm very happy with this team. And that'll do it for today's video, man. Hit that like button on the way out. Hit that subscribe button on the way out. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.